What a salt bridge does is, salt bridge allows the ions to flow back and complete the circuit. So let's have a look at an example, right? Let's just say I use copper and zinc. So I have zinc and I have copper. Now I know that zinc is actually more reactive, so zinc will undergo oxidation and copper will undergo reduction. So what I will have, zinc will undergo oxidation, copper will undergo reduction, So zinc is going to lose and go into the solution, the copper from the solution is going to go up and go over here and have the electrons flowing through. The salt bridge that I will use is KNO3 as my salt bridge. The reason is because this does not react with the ions to produce a precipitate. If it did that, then the salt bridge can't work. Now think of it like this, right? This guy is giving away electrons. So this guy is becoming more positive. This guy is taking the electrons so this guy is becoming more negative. To make sure that these solutions are neutral, both sides are neutral, I need the negative charge to come back, and then everything will bounce. So the electrons are going that way, what I need is, I need the negative ions to flow back through the salt bridge to complete the circuit. Alright, so let's have a look at a couple of the examples, right? So we'll walk through a few examples just to make sure all of these concepts stick into a head. The other things I forgot to tell you was an anode and a cathode. Anode is where oxidation happens, cathode is where reduction happens. A way to remember it is anox, anode is oxidation, and red cat. Cathode is reduction. So, looking at the equation itself, what we'll have is this, alright? Um, again, this question is in the PowerPoint that accompanies this. I'll give you a diagram. And in the diagram, I have AG positive and I have PV to be positive. I connect it up. I put my salt bridge. I put an electrolyte. And now what they're asking you to do is they're asking you um, to identify the cathode in this diagram. So what you'll need to do is, like I said, um, this is silver and this is lead. So, we've got to figure out, we want to find the cathode, right? The cathode is red cat, is where reduction happens. And this is the less reactive. So the cathode is going to be where the reduction happens and this is the less reactive substance. We know that silver is less reactive, so therefore silver will be the cathode and this guy will be the anode. The second question they ask you is to find the cell voltage. Now, to find the cell voltage, you just need to write the half equations. All right? And then you can actually calculate the cell voltage. So, red, as I said, this guy is going to be the oxidation happening over here. So, this guy will lose. So, we have PB, two positive. Sorry. PB is going to go to PB, two positive, plus two electrons. And then I can have a look at... From the, from the data sheet that we get, there should be a number for this equation, and I just write the number down over here, which is going to be 0 0.13 volts. If I reverse it, so if in the equation it goes this way, then I need to change the sign of this number. So if in the equation they gave me this guy was going this way, then because this equation is going the other way, I need to flip this number. So if this is a negative, it will become a positive, if it's a positive, it will become a negative. You just got to make sure they're actually in the same direction. And AG is going to take this electron and become AG solid. Now remember, if this guy is giving away two electrons, um, and we just write the number for it as well, and for the number is 0 0.8 volts. Now, if this guy is giving away two electrons, I need to double everything because this guy then needs to take in two electrons. But just because I've doubled it, this number still remains exactly the same. To find the cell voltage, I just add these two numbers together, and that gives me my cell voltage. Just a quick tip, this cell voltage actually needs to be positive, because if it's negative, then it's not actually going to produce electricity, it's going to consume electricity. Um, that's it, so that's the, those are the examples that we have. Now, a few things that you need to remember is that the half equations, as I said, need to be balanced in the number of electrons. If you're doubling this, the number still remains the same, even though you've done that. 
the salt bridge, you have to use a salt bridge that does not form a precipitate because if it does, then um, this thing will break. And the last thing to keep in mind is, this cell is actually an equilibrium reaction. So what will happen is, Le Chatelier's principle does apply to this. I'll be talking about Le Chatelier's principle in one of the other um, videos. So what will happen is, this is an equilibrium reaction. The cell voltage will eventually reach a state of equilibrium. And Le Chatelier's principle applies to this. So if I change one thing on one side, it will affect the voltage. That's all we do today. Thank you.